I always feared my, my life when I went to the U.S. The only way to fight stigma and shame is to shine light on it. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you and visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Welcome to Plus Talk on Plus Life. We're all about turning positive into a plus. HIV and travel. Is it safe to carry your pills with you? What should you do? Are there places you shouldn't go? There is a fantastic resource, a website called hivtravel.org and its founder David Harry is with me today. David, tell me all about this website. I started this in 1996 when the Swiss Foreign Ministry published a list of countries where people with HIV shouldn't travel to or where they couldn't stay for longer where they couldn't have a work permit. And I thought, I read this and I thought, wow, that's nasty. I want to travel. People should know about this. So I started translating this. I put it online. It's an important resource. I use it myself. I'm someone who travels a lot. Um, and I'm always somewhat surprised when I see certain countries that you would think don't have uh, restrictions that do. Yes, uh, that's an issue. And uh, well, the US was the nastiest one for many years. Until 2010, I, f I always feared my, my life when I went to the US and I went there two or three times per year for, for 20 years with HIV. So uh, yes, it's, it is an issue and it remains an issue. This the problem with legislation is once you have it in the books, it's difficult to get out. So you, you mentioned on the website, you've got a great page there that is specifically tips and advice for people who are traveling with HIV. Um, let's just go through some of those really quickly, because one that really stood out to me is don't talk about your status. Um, and in a way, you kind of go, isn't that a shame because we should be able to be who we are and live openly and honestly? Well, of course, we should be open and, and, and out and about. Uh, however, not everybody thinks the same and when you're traveling, you're not protected. Uh, in the US and in most Europe, you are protected by law from discrimination, from nasty stuff. Uh, in other countries, you are not. And uh, you're not traveling with your lawyer. So better be careful. You want to travel, you want to be somewhere, spend some time somewhere, you might have an agenda, you might be under pressure, you might have to do business. You don't want uh, your plans to get interrupted, so you better shut up. <laughs> so, so give me some of the what you think are the top five tips for somebody if they want to travel and they're nervous, because I get asked this a lot about, you know, it, is it okay for me to travel with my meds? Should I put them in a different container? You're the expert. You've got the website. What are the five key things you want people living with HIV to think about when they're traveling? Well, uh, number one, be prepared. Uh, number two, know the situation, the legal situation. Don't be nervous. Uh, be calm. Be polite. Be well dressed. Uh, you are dealing with uh, immigration officials who are trained to find nervous people, to find insecure people, to find uh, stuff. So play normal and be ready to answer in case you are asked a question. If you're nervous, uh, get a prescription with you. I never have one because I'm not nervous, but it, it could happen. It could happen that uh, when I still traveled with medication, uh, that uh, I could have gone into trouble because the US are nasty. They want to see a prescription for every prescription medication. Uh, Chile is nasty too, other countries too. So you better, you're better prepared if, with a prescription that should not mention your condition. It should just say, uh, person XYZ needs this and this medication for to treat the personal condition. Full stop. That's enough. And what about the suggestion of not carrying your medicine in the actual original prescription bottle? Putting it into, a say, an unlabeled bottle. Is that a good idea or a bad idea if you've got a letter from your doctor saying this is prescribed medicine? I would I would do that only in a country with an entry bar or with short term uh, with with short term restrictions. Perhaps we need to look at the figures. We have 
nine countries still with entry bars. You're not supposed to go there at all. Uh, we have 13 countries with short term restrictions, which means uh, restrictions not allowing you to stay less than 90 days. Uh, we have 54 countries with long term restrictions, which means long term visa over 90 days can be denied. And we have 18 countries deporting people with HIV. Uh, that's the legal situation. Now, I would probably repack my medication when I go to Russia still. Uh, it's not very popular these days to go to Russia, but uh, <laughs> it might change. Uh, with the other countries, I wouldn't do that anymore. With the US, I constantly, consequently did it uh, back in the days when there was still an entry bar. Countries, places like Dubai, uh, Doha and Qatar, they're served by very exotic airlines that have become very, very popular for, for people all over the world because of their excellent service. Um, so a lot of us fly through these Middle Eastern ports. Are That's... we, should we still be concerned about transiting? Can we transit safely, not worry about having to put it in hidden bottles and things? No, never worry about that. And that's a question I'm often getting. I'm in transit XYZ, uh, usually Middle East. And should I worry? And I tell people, no, you don't worry. You don't go through immigration if you do transit. And even if you would, uh, I mean, a lot of questions are also asked. These countries have entry bars and they do deport, but they don't care in practice about visitors about people who, who stay short term. There is no forced HIV testing. They can't check all the people. So you're pretty safe. I've been there many times. And I think bottom line is, you know, through the, the use of this great website, HIVtravel.org, you want to encourage people to still get out there and travel and see the world because there's no reason why we shouldn't just because we have an HIV diagnosis. That's, that's correct. Uh, a, I want to support people who should be traveling. Uh, that was my initial motivation. But it's actually also an advocacy tool because uh, to remove restrictions, you need local lobbying. You need local groups that are willing going through the pain, uh, telling their government to get rid of this, uh, of this legislation. And uh, so the database informs them about the situation. Thanks, David. That is going to do it for this episode of Plus Talk. If you want more information, check out the website, hivtravel.org. And of course, remember to follow us. We are at Plus Life Media on all social media platforms and pluslifemedia.com is the website. Till next time, travel safe, be good. Bye-bye.